This is not the best selling floor plan. This is the Travato 59G floor plan. Three years ago, they changed this floor plan. Today, I'm gonna to show you four things Winnebago needs to change about this floor plan to make it more saleable and usable for camper van travel. And I'm suggesting these changes because they make such a huge impact on the van travel. I would really struggle, but probably would, buy this floor plan as it is today. But if Winnebago made these four changes, I would be jumping into this new rig because I love this color scheme in here. Let me point out number one. The first thing Winnebago needs to fix is return the bench seating and get rid of these automotive style. Why? Because they're really firm. They look cool. They do have three-point seat belts. The problem is... You can travel four in seat belts, one, two, three, four, but you can only sleep one, maybe two people. There is no point having this many pointed seat belts when, in my opinion, you can only sleep one, maybe two back here. So return this, put lap belts on. I think people will be fine with that. That would be number one. You probably disagree with me on that. Number two, this lagoon table, very popular in adventure vans, but in my opinion, does not belong in a touring coach like a Winnebago Travato. Return the permanent table, get rid of the pole. I don't miss the pole here at all, but I've seen other van builders create a permanent table with a sturdy enough strut that comes out this way to hold this table up. So then you can get one, two, three, four people around this table with the table extension that comes out to about right here. Return the table back to where it was. How are we doing so far? Two more to show you. And by the way, before I show you that, you can leave the jump seat out. I think it adds functionality. It does add some confinement to the space, but I can deal without that if you fix table seats. And number three is fix the bathroom. What Winnebago did is they moved this back wall right here in about four inches. It's hard to see the angle but it is a very distinct angle. And the reason they did that, they say, is to give more shoulder room up here. But the problem is you get no more room down here and you're still climbing, climbing over each other and still about a four by six bed. So for people in the larger size or that don't wanna disturb their partner while they're sleeping, this is kind of the problem with the bed for two, which is kind of silly to travel four. But by doing this to give you a couple more inches in the headroom back here, shoulder room, you've actually constrained the bathroom significantly, especially when you're on the commode trying to do your business and get the wipe. They did give you a couple more inches here, but I'm sorry it's gross, but depending on which hand you use, you're really constrained on this side because they moved this wall in this way. You can almost see it in the door here, right? So this was moved in this way. So at Winnebago, replaced the wall back to where it was Straight flush. I don't know what you call that, straight flush. That's a good hand in poker, right? The th fourth thing they need to do, and this is really big, I don't understand why they did what they did, and that is lower the floor of the shower pan. What am I talking about? What I'm talking about is they tried to solve a problem that most people didn't have because most people don't shower in their vans. Now I shower in my van many times a month and I can stand to use the toilet and I can stand to use to shower without any banging of the head uh, because I'm about five, ten, uh, five feet, 10 inches. But what they did is that to solve the problem of the shower drain pump, they raised the floor about four inches, which means for me to stand straight up and I'm just wearing hiking boots, nothing super special. I actually can't stand up straight. I'm really bumping against the ceiling. So I have to bend my head to use the commode. So they solved a problem that most people didn't deal with and they gave everybody that's over, I don't know, five, six, seven inches tall, a, a guy or a gal, I guess. I don't know. Now you're rubbing your head on the ceiling. What's up Winnebago? And the problem stemmed from the initial, the original floor plan had a drain here with a stupid filter. Get rid of that implementation, put in a different kind of filter here. And then there's a secondary filter over here under the sink that you had to clean, I don't know, about every 10 showers. It was really kind of a hassle to get to. So I think if they had a really good drain system here, or a filter system, folks have made 3D prints of this, and I use cheesecloth over my original implementation. That would solve the problem of big grit, hair, other things. And then probably do you even need the secondary filter over here that was really fine mesh? that clogged up about every um, you know, seven, eight, 10 showers. 
the impeller is probably strong enough to go through getting the rest of it out because everything's being caught here. But again, this four inch rise is completely unnecessary in my opinion by rethinking the shower pump drain system filter in particular. Yeah, I made a lot of uh, complaints when this floor plan was first introduced because it really lessens the functionality that I'm so used to in my 2019 Winnebago Travato. For those of you that have the floor plan that I have, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that have bought this, kind of based on what I had, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Now, some of you love this floor plan as it is, which is great. Let me point a couple good things I really do like about this. And the first thing is this huge open great room. I call it great room because you can do so many things. Have dinner, work, have cocktails, play cards. There's no more bed up here, but maybe that's okay. So great room, awesome. Galley, huge. Microwave, fridge, freezer, pantry. Oh yeah, it's huge. Functional galley, galley on this side, lots of storage. Induction cooktop because this is a Volta equipped system. Pure three as Winnebago calls it. So living space number two. Living space number one, living space number two, living space number three is a real bathroom. You step in here, you close the door, you do your stuff, whether it's there or over here. And by the way, they didn't place this mirror correctly. Look how low this is. Good Lord, what a bagel. Hello, what's up? It needs to be up here, right? I don't even put a bigger mirror in would solve the problem. But nonetheless, you can get yourself down in the bathroom with a real door that's closed. And then if you open it, you step out of room, room number three. Room number four is, you guessed it, the bedroom. But it's only a bedroom when you need to go to bed. So this is a Murphy style bed. So it's up and out of the way most of the day. You have all this lovely garage storage down here. There's still more storage here on the side. You've probably seen this. And that, whoa. And this is where you get your water in, get your party on. But when it's not bedtime, you have this huge hallway really opening up the space. So it feels like you're in, I don't know, a four compartment room. Now, when it's bedtime, you simply move this down like that. And now you've got basically a four by six bed, super nice and because you're in a bedroom back here, close this window at night, the doors are closed, obviously. Then you have this bedroom that is separate from the rest of the van. And the last thing I really love about this particular color scheme is it's absolutely gorgeous. You have these white, really silky smooth, almost like banana peel, matte finish cabinets right? But you have this dark mahogany looking wood that's absolutely beautiful. So while the cabinetry itself is dark, because of this light color scheme up here, it just brightens and lifts the entire interior of the van. Now there's a couple of things that are kind of like, rah, rah, I, you know, personal preference. I actually like the TV placement of where mine is, which is there. This is, you'll probably get used to this kind of sticking into the alleyway a little bit. It does nice because it is swivel and pivot so you can watch it in bed. And this up here, you know, they put here because the seats are in this area where mine is. I like mine back here because it's actually never seen unless you're sitting from this position here, right? Now you can see it, the gauges, but this is kind of always in your face. So I would prefer when they make the bench seat change, put all those gauges back here and even do a multiplex system. So it's a touch screen situation in conjunction with the Volta. And this would be really, in my opinion, big improvements over the 59G floor plan, which is not the best selling in the Travato line because of some of these things we've talked about. And I think they could actually increase sales by making some of these changes. So we'll see. The as, I've, as I have talked with the Winnebago team over the last couple of years, they're taking feedback. They said everybody complained about the jump seat that used to be there, but now everybody complains about no second bed. They complain about these seats and they complain about the shower raised floor creating a height issue in the bathroom. Let me know what you think about these changes because I think if Winnebago implemented them, this would be 
right in there, almost a 50-50 split with the uh, Travado K floor plan, which everybody copies. Nobody copies this floor plan. Please tell me why, because this is a four-room touring coach, great for van life full-time or really long trips because you have separate living spaces, four of them. Thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate that. Until we see you soon, I'd like to say journey on and peace be with you. To contrast what you've just seen in that new rig, I want to show you my rig. This is a 2019 Winnebago Travado 59 GL. G is the floor plan. So I'm going to show you inside so you can see what I am talking about. When I open the door, you are faced with the jump seat here. You have to use the handle to get inside, but there's great room, seat, driver's seat, passenger seat, jump seat, table, extension, permanent table, and then the banquette, dinette, whatever you want to call it, seating arrangement here. This is a much better implementation and the gauges, again, super important that they're out of the way instead of kind of in your face all the time because you see this all the time. The permanent table with the post. What makes this cool is this collapses and you move the cushions around into a four foot by six foot bed so you can travel one, two, three, four. They have lap belts, not three point. You can travel four people in here, put two people up in the front bed, two people in the back bed. This makes sense mathematically to me. Not sure how you feel about that. Placement of the TV, not ideal for watching movie from bed because you really can't unless you make this into a bed. I use this mostly for artwork. If I want to watch TV, I kind of use this position. I close the door like this. And you can kind of lean against this to watch the old telly, right? Again, massive galley. This is about the same. Pretty cool. This is the Volta system right here. Lithium. This is the bed. Murphy bed lays down. What makes this floor plan so special is you can have all of this garage storage space for gym bag, shower bag, extra water table, and a chair all fits in back here. This is the bed situation I have. We got some blankets, pillows, and the bathroom, what I'm talking about here is, because my shower floor is so much lower than the four inches they added approximately, I can stand as a guy to use that versus kind of tilting your head because you can't stand in this bathroom and use that because they try to solve a problem that most people don't have, which is showering in your van. I'm kind of odd in that way. Thanks for watching.